Hi, my name is Haley, also known as Someday Knits here on YouTube as well as Instagram and Ravelry, and this is my knitting podcast. Today is episode 10, so I'm super excited. It did take a year to get 10 episodes out, but that's okay. And we are going to do the regular routine. I'm gonna start with finished objects, which I just have a few of. I have lots of whips, um, lots of progress that's kind of been made across the board, and a couple of acquisitions, nothing too crazy. So let's get started. First finished objects are my Friday Night Socks by Northwoods Knit Co. I don't have sock blockers. I don't know if I'll ever get sock blockers, but they do fit. They look crazy. Just trust me, they fit. Um, this was whew, many months in the making. I started these October 1st for my Socktober socks. I finished the first sock in October, I think, and it was just that second sock that took forever. I think this is the second one. Um, so yeah, I have two matching socks now-ish. The stitch counts are different because for some reason my first sock had a couple extra stitches in there. Um, but it's you can't really tell when you're wearing it. And then I can't tell if I did the right number of rows at the very, very end. I think I did one less row on the second one because I was having trouble um, counting. So, yeah, but to a regular looker, a regular looker, um, you wouldn't really be able to tell when I'm wearing them. And they're so cute. The white and the black is so wearable. Um, so I'm excited to have them. But it was a, it was a journey to get here. Um, if you saw the last podcast, you saw that I had moved them to the nine inch circulars and that sped it up a little bit. I got um, about two cables worth done on the nine inch circulars, but cabling just wasn't that smooth on such a tiny little circumference. So I ended up going back to Haya Haya Flyers, which um, I guess is kind of part of acquisitions but I had to order them in the two millimeter because I only had the 2.25 and they are uh, flexible double pointed needles, I think would be like the general term for them, but they're Haya Haya is the brand and Flyers is what that brand calls these. They're super sharp like most Haya Haya needles and then being um, two millimeters, it kind of makes them even pointier. So if you're someone who pushes your stitches off um these are gonna hurt but other than that i forgot how fast socks go by on these things i have made a pair of socks um like a full sock on the 2.25 millimeter set and then i put them down and, and kind of never picked them up again because mind you i've only completed this is only my second pair of socks ever. I did complete one more sock that I never made a second companion to. So I've only knit five socks ever. But two of them were on these flyers. And I love them. And I guess maybe because I didn't have them in two millimeters, I just kind of forgot about them. But as soon as these came in, the sock was done the next day. It's like the ease of magic loop without having to shuffle the cord through and if you have a cord that has a lot of memory or doesn't like to straighten out you know my magic loop can kind of be a pain especially if you don't have spin cables either so this kind of just takes all of that out and you can just go boop 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 so the setup is one needle for each side and then one working needle so you work across and then you'll finish that needle so this will come out and then it'll be on these two needles you know magic loop but on three needles instead of one long cable i love it and i think i'm going to use these to start a vanilla sock but 
not not really a vanilla sock because I think that pattern is cuffed down but a plain stockinette sock I like to do my socks toe up so I think I'm gonna use these to start it and then transfer it to the nine inch circulars to see if um, stockinette goes a little faster on the circulars which I think it will but anyway yes that is my first finished object and my last finished ish not really object is one section of the butterfly wing it looks kind of cute on camera in real life it looks um i don't know just kind of out of place but on camera it kind of looks like a wing so this is going to be the bottom section of four and you make four um separate sections and then sew them onto the pattern is written for a bunny with butterfly wings. I haven't decided if I want to do the bunny just yet, but it's working. Um, you do the wing this part and then you do a back part and finish it together. And you just have this one end which you can use for sewing and all the ends are just tucked inside of here. Um, it also makes me curious if you could stuff it and have like a stuffed butterfly. But anyway, doing this out of the Big Twist value yarn, which uh, as it's called is very affordable. It's 100% acrylic. In my last video, I had mentioned that I got a ton of it for like $15 because you, you need seven colors for the wing. So I got seven huge um skeins and it's it's kind of exactly what you would expect out of a cheaper acrylic yarn so when you get close to the wing you can see that the yarn does not really um i don't know stick to itself or it it has a lot of halo which will eventually pill together and the colors kind of bleed into one another but for what this is which is just like something to look at i i don't really mind but if you were making it for a gift or for like maybe a stuffed animal to actually be used I don't think this is the way to go and if this turns out really cute i think i'm gonna do another one in like actual wool maybe even non-super wash so that it um so that the colors don't bleed into one another so much and the the lines will be crisper if you know what i mean so that is all for finished objects whips um I think we're pretty much in the same boat as far as count but um, some things have changed up a little bit and I did cast on one more item so let's start with the blanket which is in this bag I'm not going to take it out because I can't show it on camera anyway but I figured we can just do the um, the little tracker that I had made in my planner so this is how far we are I've added I think these two since the last video in these corners and I've got a long way to go still but again that was one of my project goals for the entire 2024 so I have plenty of time it's only February and then the next one let's go with this this is my mixed rib raglan that I don't have a good name for yet um for once i have not changed the collar this time i left it as is since the last video but i i don't think this is going to be the final neckline i think i'm going to extend it and fold it under so far but i'm so close i have i've been counting by cables so this section right here has two cables in it and the full sleeve is four cables long. So we're so, so close for this being 
or so so close to this being completely done but of course i ran out of the lace weight the lang cashmere dreams so i'm just waiting for one more ball of that and then i will go ahead and crank this out and then kind of block it figure out what i want to do with this neckline and then go from there as far as whether or not i feel like it's worth writing up um into a pattern but oh my gosh it's the softest coziest like just cloud of a sweater it feels so so good and i can't wait to wear it but i'm just hoping that it blocks the way i want it to block in my head or i'm gonna be really disappointed and then i also want to finish that up because i want to free up my needles for this this is a stuke sweater i knit for my mom last year it's in knitting for olive heavy merino in hazel um and it is a saddle shoulder ribbed sweater pretty straightforward as far as shaping and then you have cables for the hem on the sleeves and the body as well as little touches in the uh on the neckline coming off the neckline in the front and the back it's a really gorgeous pattern it's like just enough um pizzazz but also not too much going on it's really easy to wear really easy to style and i'm strongly considering casting one on for myself but first my mom wants more length in the body look at all these cables this lady wants me to rip out all of this add more length and redo all these cables and for her i will I will gladly so i want to free up my four millimeter needles from the uh mixed rib raglan and put this back on the needles to finish for her because this is on four millimeter as well and i just remembered i i have fixed circulars in four millimeter so actually i'm not even gonna wait on that one i'm just gonna get this back on the needles like tonight because i'm ready for her to stop asking me about when it's going to be done even though i love her so much and then next we have my pearl sweater which has actually got i've actually made a lot of progress compared to where we were before it is on um 30 inch circulars so it's kind of scrunchy or 32 whatever um but look at that i'm so so happy i made the switch from the coffee to the um mulberry because it just has that like warmth that i was really after and i think in the end it didn't really lighten it up too much it's still really dark it's darker in person than it looks on camera but also making it just that tad bit lighter the broken rib has just a little bit more of a moment it's still a pretty dark fabric so you know you're only going to see so much detail in darker colors but i think oh that's super bright um but i think overall i'm really digging the look this is my first time really committing to a uh, mohair as my lace weight and it feels so soft this is the uh isagar silk mohair in the color mulberry and it feels so soft in hand but i just have a feeling it's still gonna be itchy i'm not quite sure but it feels really good and I think if anything the only place it might bother me is like around my neck and this is a v-neck so I'm hoping that kind of gets rid of the problem but regardless I'm definitely still going to wear it that's not going to um, make or break the project as a whole for me but yeah I'm just super excited to see the progress oh I saw this reel on Instagram I don't know if y'all saw it where this lady made a like super huge chain of light bulb pins light bulb markers whatever 
of all the amounts of increases she needed, like how many sets. And then as she goes along, she just adds another. And at first I was like, that's way too much, like way too long of a chain to just be dangling. I feel like that would be super annoying, but it's actually not annoying at all. Eh. In the beginning, the only annoying part was that if I put the project away and got the project back out, sometimes the, the strand would be like tangled in the yarn but as far as like actually knitting it hasn't been that annoying and it's so fun to like see this get shorter and shorter and shorter so I only have three more little sets and then I'll be joining in the round and then whenever I finish that ball of yarn you know I'm gonna go straight to the collar because I cannot wait to see how this double folded V is going going to look I'm so super excited. I've never done a V, so I'm also curious about the uh, decreases in the middle to like make the point of the V. I'm, I'm just super, super excited. But of course, I ran out of the mohair because I only bought one ball to test the color. So I'm waiting on the rest of it to come. I think it gets here like later this week. So we'll see. And then next whip, I've made a ton of progress on this one. I think last episode, it was just a back panel. That back panel that I showed no longer exists. Um, I had the, not the hardest, I've had harder. But I had quite a time trying to get the back of this to sit the way I wanted. Um, I have made sweaters with a somewhat similar construction as far as doing the back picking up for the shoulders but I didn't realize how much of a factor the ribbing was going to play on the angle of this slope if that makes sense so I tried two different rates of increasing in this same structure and then I tried um, where you cast on a bunch of stitches, cut the yarn, and start in the middle, and bounce back and forth with short rows to make the slope, um, similar to the storm sweater, how the storm sweater starts. But I just didn't love it because design-wise, like aesthetically, I really wanted this piece. So anyway, this is the fourth attempt at this back panel, and so far I think it worked out pretty well. Um, it's still looking super skinny, but I think it's gonna grow quite a bit in blocking. And then I picked up for the shoulders. I joined those two front panels for the chest panel and I went ahead and skipped to the collar to make sure everything was fitting the way I want it to fit. And so far this looks really good. Like I said, a second ago, the only thing I'm nervous about is um, if it's going to be too snug. My swatch grew a lot after blocking, so I'm nervous, but at the same time, I feel like it's, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to be okay. But just looking at it, I'm still nervous because I haven't seen it in like this construction versus just the like one square swatch. But I'm really happy with the way this is going. My next battle is going to be how I want to line up these front cables with these back cables so that it makes sense when I connect under the arm without the armhole being too deep. Um, but I do want that really roomy, like, just oversized enough type of fit not where it's like super boxy in the body but more roomy in the armpit i guess but yeah we'll just have to wait and see on that one this is the um I'm gonna wait for the phone to finish ringing but this is the durham natura penelope um, one strand of Penelope and one strand of the Berenice in Petite Matin is the color, which is a very, very 
very pale uh, blue, like I would say a gray undertone blue. So yeah, this is super cozy. This is also mohair, but this is a mohair with wool. And it does feel different. I don't know if it necessarily feels um, softer or less soft, but it does feel different. I think because it's not as fluff everywhere, it's uh, like little touches of fluff. But I really, really like it. And I think my favorite part is the Penelope, which is a, I don't know, maybe worsted weight? Um, non superwash wool silk blend. And this stuff is just so round and plump and like bouncy. But when you knit with it, it doesn't give you that like bar. I, I don't know if you're going to know what I mean, but sometimes when you get a worsted like high spun yarn that's super round when you knit with it like one side of your knit stitches makes that little line and then the other side I'm, I'm just gonna try to put a picture but I really don't like when that happens because I feel like it gives the fabric a texture or a design that I don't that I didn't ask for like I, I just didn't ask for that and this does not do that at all whatsoever and i have knit with it with and without the uh sh the strand of lace so i didn't have that in either occasion and i highly recommend if you're looking for a non-super wash that's a little bit less scratchy because the silk really does soften it up a lot i just i really love that yarn it's not the cheapest but I really love it and you can just tell that it's gonna stand the test of time. It feels like a really, really hardy wool. But anyway, next whip is this um, Korshavn sweater man. And I know it looks completely different than the last time we spoke and, and here's why. Hear me out. The Sandness Garn Frigid Garn However you uh, pronounce this, please help me out. Is, you know, it's, it's, it's the right yarn for somebody. And I'm not that somebody. And although this is for my husband, let's be honest, if I take the time to knit an entire men's size sweater, at one point in time, I'm going to wear it. I'm going to borrow it and I'm going to wear it myself. And that yarn, I wasn't going to be able to wear it. As much as my husband said it was fine and it felt good. Well, I shouldn't. I mean, maybe it did feel good to him. But no. No, ma'am. So I had to pivot. And... This is what I ended up with. I got two colors because I'm still on my train of ordering one ball to make sure I like it so that I just don't waste um, money and end up with a stash of stuff I don't like. So, this is what it looks like. It is the Cascade 128 Super Wash. Um... Does it have, oh, okay, it has 128 yards, so that's why it's 128. Uh, super, super thick. I don't know what you would call this, maybe bulky? Maybe Aaron? I'm not sure. It is 128 yards per 100 grams, 117 meters, and it is suggested for six millimeter needles or eight millimeter crochet hook and this is the color tough it oh just kidding it says bulky right there on the back tells you everything you need to know um this was the color tough it it doesn't have the color on the label so i got this from 
woolen company and they had it listed as tuffet and they had this color listed as bitter chocolate and i went with the bitter chocolate because i feel like these holes in the pattern will blend a little better with his skin tone he's a little bit more chocolate than i am and if you were to wear like a black or a navy or a dark color underneath it you wouldn't have that like super high contrast like polka dots everywhere um because these holes are quite big and i imagine they're only going to get bigger when blocking and my husband's a simple man you know he likes to just be able to throw stuff on and go and I didn't want him to have to think about these holes too much. So this way, if he wears it with no shirt, the holes will look fine. And if he wears it with a dark shirt, which is most of his shirts, they're black, they'll still look fine. Because I, I asked him and he said, he said he likes the holes. So we'll see. He hasn't said he didn't like anything. So I don't know. But I will say... On 5.5 millimeter needles, this goes by so fast. This is 100 grams though. This is a full ball of yarn and I've gotten, I haven't even completed one repeat of the, the basket pattern. So one repeat is two rows of basket. And I think I have like 18 more repeats to go. So I ordered that as well based on the yardage in the pattern i would only need 600 grams for size small but because i'm gonna have to make the body longer and the arms longer i bought 800 grams but that's i don't know that just still doesn't sound right because like i said this is one ball so i feel like eight balls is just gonna be the body but i'm gonna trust their guidance and not um, over purchase beyond what I've probably over purchased because I don't have a good storage system to just be collecting stuff. But yeah, overall, I'm super excited about that one. It's so, so, so much softer. It's super washed, so it's gonna tend to be softer anyway, but it's so much softer than the, the previous yarn. But like I said, the, the Sandus Karn is the right yarn for somebody. It's not a bad yarn. It's just not for me. And then lastly, I have, what do you think it is? Another Hidden Scraps beanie. So this is, um, this is going to be an adult large. I'm making the biggest size. And... These are my scraps. You start with your scrap color. I'm using one, I have my little yarn ball that my mother-in-law got me for Christmas. Love her. I have one ball of the Wolf Folk Timed in, I think this is like 39 or something. I, I picked up this color because I was looking for a super dark eggplanty purple. And I thought I was never going to find it. And I thought, well, maybe this brown will be the closest thing I'll ever find. But then I found it. So I don't really have a purpose for this one ball. And then I have this. Um, this might be Suburban Stitcher as well. Like a February yarn of the month from 2022. And if I'm remembering that correctly, that's kind of crazy. Um, so I didn't have enough of either one because this comes in 50 gram balls and I had 50 grams left of this which is insane because I made a full pair of like long socks and I still have 50 grams but anyway I didn't have enough of either one individually and I thought a chunk of this and a chunk of this might look weird so I'm holding them together now I have too much but that's okay I'll just use the rest for something else I guess and I casted them on to start working on the tutorial. I want to release a, a video tutorial 
for this pattern that will kind of go over the steps of the pattern it's not going to have the numbers and like all the exact details for every single size because that would just be too much sorry let me close this all right so it's not going to be a complete tutorial with all the stitch counts and measurements and everything for every single size but it is going to kind of go over each step and all the techniques used um, just for those who may either be newer or newer to reading patterns or just more of a visual learner you never know um, so I plan on releasing that next week based off of this I will say these are like super high contrast marled together and it's not the it's not the most easily visible but I'm hoping it ends up okay because it's not a tutorial necessarily on how to knit you know tutorial it's a tutorial on how to make this hat so I'm hoping that'll come out next week to accompany um the pattern that is actually out now um it came out on friday february 9th so it is available on shopify ravelry and lovecrafts and regardless of what platform you purchase it on you can add it to your Ravel ravelry library um if you want so if you wanted to check out my website and purchase on my website, you can still upload the pattern to your Ravelry library, or you can just go straight through Ravelry. But if you are a super um, Ravelry, in, a super Ravelry enthusiast, I guess, um, because you just like all your patterns in the same place, don't worry. Regardless of where you purchase, you will be able to add the pattern to your Ravelry library. And if you have any issues, you can always shoot me an email, which is at the bottom of my website. Everything will be linked in the description box below if that's something you're interested in. And yeah, go check it out. I'm super excited to see all the color combinations and things that people came up with. If you do have a Ravelry account and look on Ravelry, there was one of my testers in the project pages for the pattern, and she made this valentine's day like bright red one with pink stripes and then a light pink inside let me so like this is the completed hat and you have this inside section so this was light pink she used for the scraps and then a red hat with pink stripes for valentine's day it was so so cute i loved it so much so yeah um you can check that out you can see everything the testers came up with and kind of get some ideas flowing and yeah just thank you in advance if you decide to support i really appreciate it um but yeah that is my last whip for this this chat oh and this is going to be the final color it's not it's not the yellowy yellowy tie-dye i know i bet you're shocked i've done so many hats in this color i think i got three three hats out of those two balls so this is going to be the color of the next i guess it's technically the fourth sample but the second color it's hedgehog fiber sock in the color teacup it's a neutral base but it's definitely a peachy cream it's not like a completely flat cream with some hot pink some like dark hot pink some light hot pink and then there's some brown focus on the yarn there's some brown speckles in there kind of like greenish foresty vibes some spots of blue I don't even know if that's intentional blue or if it's just like the colors the way they leak sometimes but I'm very excited to see how this goes and I only got one ball so I'm really putting the pattern to the test biggest size one hank it better work 
So for acquisitions, all I have for you are these stitch markers. These are from a brand called Sassafras Knits, but I purchased them um, from Wild Hand online. And they're four kind of like, oops, randomy sets. None of them match even within the sets. So this one has like a star. This one has a heart and then this heart and some beads. And then the last one I purchased is um, some teardrops with a little twinkle charm. And they're super cute. I got all three because there was like certain ones in all three sets that I wanted, mostly like the charm ones but you can't get a pack of like just the charms but i do think they're pretty inner interchangeable obviously this one has like a little bit more of a blue theme this is like a little pinkier and this is kind of orangey but if you mix them all together i think i think it would be cute it would be fine and then i got the uh sock needles which I already showed you, so outside of like yarn that I had to get because I ran out, I've been doing pretty good. So yeah, not too much going on as far as acquisitions, and that is all I have for you today. Um, thank you for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. Again, if you would like to check out my new pattern for the Hidden Scraps Beanie, you can find the links in the description box below. I would appreciate your support, and I will... Catch you in the next one. Bye.